Postoperative fever is part two of our presentation when we will touch many points here like evaluation, treatment, differential diagnosis and complications. Evaluation or assessment of uh, the patient includes general appearance, Glasgow coma scale or consciousness especially and vital signs to determine how sick uh, the patient is. A, B, C, D, E or airway, breathing, circulatory, disability and exposure which is a quick assessment to identify and simultaneously provide appropriate management. Many check-ins like check patient notes, the type of procedures uh, or procedure, uh, timing of the procedure, intraoperative complications if uh, they occurred or absent, anesthesia records, patient comorbidities and treatment that is taken and list or the rounds. Check patient intake and output in, which include uh, the type of stools if the patient with type 7 stools rule out Clostridium difficile enterocolitis. A check uh, patient orders is the patient being treated with antibiotics or not if uh, patient is having a deep uh, veins thrombosis prophylaxis or not and system-based uh, assessment like uh, going to pulmonary, cardiac, GI tract or urinary uh, tract assessment. Uh, sites of infections that are visible, especially skin for bed sores if patient lying for a long time, cellulitis, vascular excess sites. Besides test, vital signs should be monitored. If the patient is hypotensive, uh, venous blood gas is needed to measure serum lactate. Serum lactate uh, shows us if the perfusion, peripheral perfusion suffers or not. It will guide uh, us for fluid resuscitations. Uh, of, for fluid resuscitation, if the patient is tachycardic bedside, EKG to confirm their rhythm might rule out MI or myocardial infarction. Oxygen saturation like uh, 96 or 98 in patient with healthy lungs in times at 89 to 92 in carbon dioxide retaining patients, for example, in obstructive uh, patients like uh, COPD or cro uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease patients. Urinalysis, urinalysis to rule out urinary tract infection. And blood tests like uh, white blood uh, cells and CRP or C-reactive protein, especially if trending upward, might point towards a septic response. Hemoglobin levels should... Uh, uh, be taken and would point towards the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Monitor blood glucose level because uh, high blood glucose level points towards systemic response. As well, uh, liver function like uh, to rule out the liver injury, coagulation parameters uh, and platelets uh, function to rule out any disseminated intravascular coagulation, renal function for electrolyte abnormalities. A microbiology so uh, take cultures like blood, urine, wound and sputum if a uh, patient produce it. If uh, suspecting a line sepsis, blood culture from the line sh uh, should be taken. Of course, remove this line and send the tip of the catheter to the laboratory. Imaging uh, like chest x-ray prove or rule out pneumonic process, abdominal imaging, ultrasound, CT scan or anything else to rule out any collections or abscesses and venous uh, doppler of the legs to rule out deep veins thrombosis. What is the treatment of uh, of uh, postoperative fever. So it can include oxygen, fluid balance, intravenous fluids. We are giving fluids because uh, during fever, patient lose uh, liquids and through the sweating. 
and urinary uh, catheter uh, antibiotics. So urinary catheter to monitor uh, urinalysis or diuresis. Drugs like analgesics, antiemetics, antipyretics and antibiotics. So if the cause is uh, infection, antipyretics and anal analgesics do not treat the cause and only will uh, uh, correlate or will make a better symptoms for patient. Incentives uh, spirometry to uh, determine the lung capacities like tidal volume, inspiratory capacities, uh, force and expiratory capacity. Uh, venous thromboembolism prophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin and wearing pneumatic stocking. If available, of course, they are very uh, effective and it is approved by many, many studies. Escalation, uh, so relay information to a senior health professional and ask for further advice from infectious disease physician. Differential diagnosis, but mostly it's to determine the cause. It is pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, wound infection, urinary tract infection, transfusion, reaction, or sinusitis. And prognosis. So patient with deep brain prognosis and pulmonary embolism, it is if it is not massive one, usually have a low grade fever that resolves within a few days of treatment. The prognosis is worse for patients who have anastomotic leaks or bowel obstruction. Complications, failure to diagnose the cause of fever or identify the severity of it, uh, failure to treat at the right moment can lead to uh, the patient can lead the patient into uh, serious or systemic inflammatory response, sepsis, severe sepsis or septic shock. So, so from this side to this one, it is uh, measurement of the severity, and this can lead, of course, to prolonged hospitalization and even increase in mortality rate. Enhancing healthcare team outcomes. So uh, here uh, the uh, queen is nurse, the nurse, of course. So is probably the first person who monitors the patient and discovers the fever. In order to know the cause, the nurse should first check the onside, auscultate uh, the lungs and assess for deep vein thrombosis. But once the fever has been detected or noted, the health care provided should be notified and the workup depends on the pre patient presentation and of course the day of the fever. Thank you for your watching. This video is this presentation is made uh, from materials like NCBI and you can check on our website by self and read this article very interesting and very structured and thank you for your watching.